once again, Pastor, you're here. Yeah. Hey, you're welcome. Thank you. Well, so we would like to know why are you here? Yeah, well, I got a, I was asked to come here mm. um, because a complaint was made about me mm. of discrimination. Mm. And uh, that it says my Twitter posts where I was discussing the issue of HIV AIDS beauty pageant mm. were discriminatory. So I've come to explain uh, before court uh, why I said what I said. Yeah. So in terms of uh, what I was complaining was uh, I said that the, a beauty contest of the prettiest girl with HIV is a campaign to sexualize and make normal having a deadly and contagious virus. That I said stigma is necessary to discourage non-infected from getting it. This I say the beauty contest was to make HIV sexy. I also say the complaint that in the history of public health, we have never had beauty contests for similar sexually transmitted diseases such as gonorrhea, syphilis, genital warts, chlamydia, no hepatitis B. I said, can you imagine a Miss Gonorrhea or Miss Genital Warts? All have stigma and a life deadly. I think the last one was, um, I say that every disease must have a stigma to make it undesirable for the uninfected. This competition is trying to make it desirable, a desirable disease. I said I lost both my sister and brothers to HIV, it's a deadly disease. Mm. This is not to deny that someone, some people who carry the virus are sexy and pretty. So because of those comments that I made, I was uh, dragged to court by uh, a complaint uh, that said, um, the complaint said that, uh, <coughs> Oh, that it's from Sehud Center for Health mm -hmm. and Human Rights. It says that uh, these posts are discriminatory and an affront to the dignity of people living with HIV/AIDS. Mm. Uh, contrary to Article 2124, and they quoted them. They say that I have a freedom of speech. Uh, but it's not absolute, and its enjoyment should not in a way prejudice fundamental rights. So they asked the commission to investigate the acts and take action, uh, including punishing me. So uh, we're here in court to discuss that. Uh, I'm here to explain that I actually have uh, people who work for me, who have HIV AIDS, who live in my home, my brothers and sisters, that I did not mean any harm. So it's why we're here today. So, Pastor, one question yeah. as you leave. What's your next step after you win this case? <laughs> well, I, I think that what's important is to, to help people to understand that uh, we must all be involved in the fight against HIV AIDS, all of us. And then also, um, in terms of it's our duty, you know, by 2030, we want to make HIV AIDS history. But there is those who are infected and those who are uninfected, and both of us need to be talking. So I've been at Makere for the last 22 years, and I've seen prevented about a million new infections of HIV AIDS. So in the next few years, I want to see more. You know, by 2030, I want to see that more and more people are free from HIV AIDS and uh, enjoying good lives and healthy lives. Yeah, so that's what we're hoping to do. And then also, I think the issue of freedom of speech, we must not be afraid to debate ideas respectfully of others. Uh, freedom of speech is the ability to speak what may annoy you or may bother you or disagree with you, but it's an exchange of ideas. So. We cannot suppress uh, people's abilities to think, uh, but at the same time, we must also be respectful of the people. Uh, my thought is that the virus must always have a condemnation,
but the people must always have our love. So creating a balanced message for those two things. Nobody loves HIV, nobody loves the virus. It's, it does, it killed my brother, it killed my sister. It, you know, it's messed us, messed our lives. But the people we love. And so finding ways of communicating that uh, in a balanced way is really important. And I hope that it can come out of this dialogue as we continue the discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Wish you victory in this case. <laughs>